to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rukaku Dash Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. And I'm going to entitle this video The IUIC says, or the members of the IUIC say GMS the members or GMS are stupid Christians so we're gonna go into that in a minute but I wanted to deal with this first I wanted to come to this right here so I was getting ready to curse this girl out cause I thought she was gonna come with that Christian tip but she she was on point. So this is a video. I didn't watch the video. I just watched the opening right here. And then he goes into it. And uh, when I get a chance, I'll watch the rest of the video. Short video. Not even 20 minutes long. So uh, this is put up by GMS South Carolina 08. And this is a, uh, well, it says TikTok here. So this is fair use, fair use, fair use. Um, I wanted to play this and then I'm going to speak on it and then I wanted to go into the word perf perfect and I should look up the word perfection but I'm going to go into the word perfect what I did was I just put in the word perfect and I just you know checked off certain precepts so now, now let's watch this and by the way, IUIC, based on what this guy said, really uh, regurgitating what what he was uh, what was given to him by uh, you know Nate, Bishop Nate, and the rest of the uh, the leadership. They they're pretty much master master regurgitators. And then he even says he gets on this because of the you got a certain group teaching that the MOTB is a micro C hip, and he said it's not. But then he says, don't take the, the C-hip. So they know that there is a, a, a C-hip coming, a microchip coming. Even uh, Bishop Nathaniel even said that. He said, uh, they may throw a microchip in there. Now, he said that because we've been saying it for years, and the, and the news is out there. Okay, so there's a lot of things happening, man. You miss a, you miss a day, you miss a lot. So... There was another uh, video I was watching. Uh, he from my brother out of uh, uh, Florida. Part of his name is Samak, something Samak. So he was going into, pro uh, what was it, Project uh, Agora. So I may get into that. If I don't get into that on this video, I'll get, it on, on, get into it the next. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me go ahead and jump the gun. And I got to find the, the video again. Let me just do this. So I'm a little all over the place. I was doing a little uh, uh, research on Elag, El, Elag Gabulos, which was... Uh, I believe that was a nickname. But here's his real name. But that he was known by. He came in in the power when he was 14 years old. He was the one that chopped off the head of uh, Mike Cranus. Let me see if I'm pronouncing his name right. Is it Ma? Give me a second. I think it's Ma. Okay, my Cranus, all right? So this is uh, Elagabalos was raised to the to the principate at 14 years of age. 
and an army revolt instigated, I'm sorry, instigated by his grandfather, Julia Ma Messia. And these were Jake's, by the way. Jake then took over the whole Roman Empire against uh, Cara Kala's short-lived success successor, short-lived successors, Micranus. Micranus is a character uh, Denzel Washington is playing in the upcoming movie in a couple, about another week or so. Uh, Gladiator 2, you see uh, Denzel, he's Ma, uh, Ma, Macrinus or Macrinus or Emperor Macrinus. So he ruled after uh, Caracalla, which Caracalla is, um, I'm going to get back into the main subject, Caracalla is uh, the son of Septimius Severus, and Septimius Severus was not the first Jake ruler. We then took the Roman Empire down back in, um, the last Edomite ruler, uh, emperor was, uh, uh, um, what's his name, uh, Domitian. The younger brother of uh, Titus, the son of, of Vespasian, and after that was the end of this man's king, uh, under this man's rulership, where Jake came in, Nerva. He had the five good emperors. One of them was Marcus Aurelius. Another one was Hadrian. Those are all Jakes. And this is why Jake. This is why Esau watches us, because they know that we're the Israelites, and they know that we took the Roman Empire from them. So. so you know, Ridley Scott, I believe he was the producer of that movie. Um, he, But he, when he made the first Gladiator, if it's Ridley Scott, somebody correct me. I'm not going to look it up. If it's, I believe it's Ridley Scott. He makes some great period pieces. He did the, he did the, the first Gladiator, and he had uh, Edomite actors play uh, Marcus Aurelius and um, Commodus, which... Uh, was that wasn't Peter O'Toole? That was uh, was that Peter O'Toole? I believe it's Peter O'Toole. Matter of fact, I'm gonna have to go into that. It was either it, it was either Peter O'Toole or um, what's this guy? Uh, I gotta look it up. I'm sorry, but he was a partner. If it wasn't Peter O'Toole, it was the, the other guy. They used to say he was drinking buddies. But um, they were supposed to be Jakes. So Ridley Scott went off on that one. And the character that uh, this guy played, the main character, they just made it up. That guy never existed. The Spaniard, he never existed. They just made this shit up. But uh, so, when you, so if you go to watch the movie, understand that, that the character that, that Denzel plays it was was a Caesar, a, a emperor, but he was Jake, and Jake then took the kingdom down. He came into power in uh, two seventeen, and he ruled for one year, and then he came in, and he had it, but he had other people probably talk to him. You know, get, you know, get to his ear, because there was a war going on, and uh, Macranus got defeated. And what this, what he said, G give me his head, take, chop his head off and put it in a box or a bag and bring it to me so I can know that he's dead. You, can, you know, you do the history right there. Let me see this. It says, uh, it was Roman Empire from, uh, 2 8. See, L E Gab, Gab E Les, which is almost like Hebrew. Uh, was Roman Emperor from 2018 to 2022. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, four years while he was, was still a teenager. I believe he was 14 at the time. His short reign was notorious for religious controversy and alleged sexual debauchery. That could have been P. Diddy back then. A close relative to Se Severin the Severan dynasty, which Jake ruled out, that Severan dynasty. Look, there's Jake. There's Jake right there. Look at that. There's Jake. 
And they would marry an Edomite woman, some of them, sometimes called the Septimian dynasty, uh, was an ancient Roman imperial dynasty that ruled the Roman Empire between 193 and and uh, 235 during the Roman Imperial. Pre this was in Jake. Jake then took over the whole Roman Empire. Like I said, Esau is scared to death because he, he already got the history. He has the history books that we took over the Edomite rule of Rome. I'm going to get back in the subject. Please bear with me. The Edomite rule of Rome only got, goes back. I believe it was 40, 45 when our, uh, Julius came in. I believe it was the year it was 45 or thereabouts. They, they started coming to power back in 69 a, uh, BC. It was Japheth that was in that rulership seat, and they came in. So let's say 45. I'll go back and double-check it. Can't remember these dates. From 45 to uh, BC to 95, 95, 96 AD, we're talking uh, 96, we're talking uh, about 150 years. So they had their rulership was 150 50 years. From that point on, 96, all the way up to the sacking of uh, uh, Byzantium, Constantinople, we ruled for over, th over a thousand years. It was over a thousand years. So, you know, when Bishop Nate says uh, September Severius came into power in 193 AD, which he's got from the Shire. Shire, Shire knew the history, but he, he didn't go that deep because he would have said, we, you know, we've been ruling and we put Esau under our feet and we're getting ready to do it again. He's, them, them elite, them super elite, they're scared to death. They know that they're going into captivity. And when we get them into captivity, they're going to get busted up. We ain't going to be nice to him. It says emperor, emperor, empire uh, between uh, 193 and uh, 235. So 193, you think of September Severus. During the Roman imperial period, uh, the dynasty was founded by the emperor Septimius Severus, who rose to power after the year I'm, I'm not going to go all into it but you can see that he's a Jake and they look like Edomites because Jake was in the getting getting with Edomites man even the, even some of the Constantines they would get they were marrying Kazakh women they would clean them up and marry them uh, so so when you watch that movie right he okay so it says my my Crinus, which is uh, Denzel, he only posthumously became known by the Latin Latinicid name of his god, whatever the fuck that means. So when you look up this history, just know that th th these were Jakes. These were Jakes. Okay, so let me get back into this. I'm sorry. So let's listen to this. I'll bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And This is fair use, fair use, fair use. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So you know what's sad about that entire scripture? That a lot of people will read that and not understand the context like they will sit there and read that and deny that african americans are the true hebrews because of that one scripture dc so knows that african americans are the true hebrews so this sister is a wise sister says nobody shall buy you how can it be y'all hmm. y'all remember that movie Django with jamie fox in it it was Django and dr schultz they were bounty hunters running around shooting up people collecting the check y'all remember that movie remember when Django tried to go back to Candyland to get his wife. Because remember, Django was a free man. However, his wife was not. She was still a slave. Excuse me. She was still enslaved. Meaning that she was somebody's property. And last time I checked, how can you just pull up to somebody's plantation, take their property without compensating them for it, 
wouldn't you be labeled as a thief? So in order for them to free Jangle's wife, Jangle's wife had to be bought. And that's where Dr. Schultz comes in. Remember at the end, before the shootout, Dr. Schultz was going to buy Jangle's wife. He had to buy her first in order for her to be free because once she became his property he can do what he wants with his property so god ain't stutter last time i checked nobody came and bought us we stayed enslaved all praise to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai okay so you can listen to the rest of the video and be edified uh so now the, so vocab uses that it says nobody shall buy you that's not talking about y'all you guys well he said um what do you say that back in uh, during the time period 70 AD all uh, male Israelites or Jews were 17 years and older they went into slavery and they tried to sell themselves but no one would buy them which is stupid that's not talk that's not the fulfillment of uh Deuteronomy 28 6 8 is not the fulfillment of uh in um 70 AD so now when you look up the word buy, the word means to redeem, to buy back. No man's going to buy us back, but uh, we, we are going to be uh, uh, bought back by Yahawashai. Because we're under bonds. We're all, we're all slaves, including Esau. You know, the Emancipation Proclamation made everybody in the country a slave, even Esau. These presidents are slaves too. They're under the Rothschilds. They have your birth certificates and so forth. They make money off of you. When you kill it, when you kill somebody, they lock you up because you you messed up their revenue. You broke something, you know. You break something, you and you in the store, you break it, you you buy it. So you kill somebody, you messed up somebody's revenue. You messed up the elite's revenue. So they're gonna punish you for it. You know they they don't they don't care that you kill kill somebody. They don't give a damn about that. So, so the word there, you shall be sold into slavery, no man shall buy you. The word, the word sold means to actually sell, the, the auction blocks and so forth, the bulk of the slaves. And then no, no man shall buy you means no man shall redeem you, buy you back, deliver you. But there will be, but there will be someone that's going to buy you back, which is Yahweh Shai, and he's not, not coming as a man, Isaiah chapter 47. So this is getting ready to happen. The mo the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is getting ready to do some work. He he's getting ready to change worlds. And when we get you, when we when we get that, when we get the over, we, we get the um, the supremacy over you. And that, that's another word. They're black supremacists. Well, in baseball, in the, in the World Series, which is not even a World Series. The World Series happened in America. They're not. Fi uh, compete against Japan and other countries. They fight. They compete against Japan. They're gonna lose a lot of times. The best play, players come out of Japan and Cuba. <laughs> Don't let it be a national Cuban team. But anyway, anyway, let's let's let. I'm I'm going I'm going off into something else. Let's just get back into this. Let's get back into this. But anyway, the bottom line is redeem is to buy. Going back to sports, you know, the, the, the um, you know, NBA uh, picks, they're buying you until you become a free, a free agent. What's the opposite of free? Slave. You're a slave. You, you, you're under contract with a particular team until you get freed up. Uh, you understand? So anyway, I'm not going to go all into that stuff let me let me uh let me deal with the word buy sold and buy and we did this before that's why you gotta go into the hebrew well the word uh buy or or is the word redeem to buy back that's all it means uh, i'm not gonna go into it but anyway let me do this i wanted to go through these precepts here i'm gonna move quick See, when you come into this truth, you you have to be perfect in this truth. When you break these scriptures down, you can't break the scriptures down any old way. You have to be you have to break it down perfectly. Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty eight, 
there's only one breakdown for Deuteronomy 2868. There's not five breakdowns. There's not three different breakdowns. There's not variations of the breakdowns. The word buy and sell and buy go goes back to the fulfillment of us coming into slavery in America. It's not talking about the Assyrian slavery. It's not talking about 70 AD. And by the way, when they went uh, the, when they went into uh, back into Egypt in 70 AD, they walked they walked back. They were they, they were on caravan. They didn't go on the ship because they were in Israel. They were in Jerusalem anyway. Why would they go on the ship uh, to go to Egypt? Well, that doesn't make sense. You don't go. You don't get on the ship. Uh, you if you're in New York and you want to go to California, you'd be a stupid ass. To say I'm going to take a, tr a, a ship, it's stupid. You got to take a plane or you got to drive because it's all dry land. All right? So let's just go into these precepts here. Job 8 and 20. Now before I go into that, let's do this. So the Most High seeks perfect. There's no, there's no well, these brothers break it down that way and this brother breaks it down this way. You know, let's get together. Let's put our differences. No, you can't put your differences to the side because you're going to have one Israelite group that's going to say Edomites can make it. Or the MOTB is, no. Or, or the, we're not, we're going to agree not to call and name you how about Shem Shah. Hell no, man. It says, uh, Job, uh, that there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High. That's why we call on Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai because we fear the Most High. And when you call on Christ and Jesus and Yeshua, and we don't know His name, and sometimes you call His name, sometimes you don't call His name. That means you have no fear and it's, uh, it's evil. So now it says here, Job uh, eight verse twenty. Behold, the Most High will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers. They're trying to break all these Israelites up, which includes our GMS. We've been out, we've been out there strong on YouTube for how many years? 27, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We're talking about 18 years, almost 20 years. Almost 20 years on YouTube. So if this thing had been broken up inside of uh, 17, 18 years, I don't think it is going to get broken up. Now, now what does it say in, um, in, in, in the book of Acts, Acts 5 and 38? Gamaliel told them, look, leave these men alone because if, they're, if they're, the Most High is not dealing with them in not so many words, they're going to come tonight. But if the Most High is dealing with them, then you're going to be in trouble with the Most High. It says... Is it any pl uh, pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous, or is it gain to him that thou maketh thy ways perfect? If you're following a teacher and you perceive that this guy's, I don't know, he's not breaking this down. I watched the GMS video and they, I don't know. Well, guess, well, if you stay with him, you're going to get destroyed with him. It says, uh, Job 36 and 4. For truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. For truly my words shall not be false. So anything, when we say the MOTB is a micro C hip, if you say anything different from that, your words are false. And you can't say, well, I didn't know. And my high priest told me this. Most I gonna say, wait a minute! I sent the prophets down to tell you the right way, and you chose not to follow the follow the path. Let me read that again. For truly, my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. So we're saying that we make it a, a business to make sure when we break something down, we go we go over it again and again and again. If we happen to broke, break down something wrong or we go off on something, we'll come back and say we went off on that. Which, when, when have you heard that from us? 
Psalms 37, 37, mark the perfect man and be and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. So what makes you a perfect man? When you come to the scriptures, you have to teach the scriptures perfectly. So concerning the MR, Revelation 13 and 16, somebody is right and or some people are right and some people are dead wrong. And if you're dead wrong, that means you're guilty of taking away from the book. And your and your names, if your if your name's in the book from the first from the beginning, the Lamb Book of Life, you're gonna be blotted out of the Lamb Book of Life, and you're gonna have to backstroke in um in the lake of fire, which you guys claim that that's uh, hell, which there's no hell in the scriptures. Uh, ISUPK doesn't teach that nonsense. Uh, Sakari doesn't teach that nonsense. Uh, uh, Genesis doesn't teach that not nonsense. Uh, Wi-Fi, I don't think they teach that. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't... Uh, um, GOCC, them bug outs, they teach that nonsense. Now, IUIC just started teaching that as maybe, mm, I don't know, four, four years, five years ago. Because if you go back four, five, five, six years, they weren't teaching that there was a hell. All of a sudden, they taught that there's a hell and Israelites are going to burn in hell. First of all, there's no such thing as an eternal hell. So what So what is uh, the bishops doing? They're waxing worse and worse. But people get deceived because they see the garments, they see the marching, they see the the uh, the, in, the beautiful intros and the outros. Yeah, this got to be the truth. It says, uh, that they may shoot in perfect at the perfect, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not so you're going to hear this guy is this yeah okay he's going to say there's a particular group that the bunch of stupid asses and this the, this that the third but he's not going to mention gms like we don't know he's talking about gms then they'll say well why you keep the bishop's name out your now why you keep getting on iuic he get on, he getting on us, but he don't. But he's, my, you know, I wasn't talking about y'all. Well, who was you talking about, Rex Humbard? Watch what your about Shimmy Howashai. And if there's any if the elect, which I believe there are, that's my personal belief. They're gonna come out of that, man. I will. Psalms 101 verse 2 I will believe I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way what does it mean I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way meaning if I'm a teacher and I'm teaching somebody I got to make sure I'm te teaching them the right way you know obey them that had the rule for uh, over thee for they watch it for, for I show I'm not going to tell you nothing that's going to lead you into destruction I will be, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart or perfect mind. Proverbs two, two verse twenty one. For the upright or the righteous shall dwell in the land. Ultimately, we're gonna be in our land, and the perfect shall remain in it so if you're not perfect you you're not gonna make it to the land in the first go round. proverbs 4 verse 18 but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day what's the perfect day when the destruction come and the kingdom come the perfect day is the kingdom but destruction got to come first but the path of the just or the righteous is as the shining light, the light gets brighter and brighter, that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Last precept, and I didn't go to over here, uh, Proverbs 11, verse 5, the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. So you teaching, you not only teaching the scriptures the wrong way, you misleading people, you are the wicked. So now, let's come over here. 
So we're at the f 5146. Okay, let's I believe it's like 52 minutes in. Let, let's see. Let's 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 check this out. So he's going through giving a sense from A to Z, Revelation 13 final. So when I saw that, I said, okay, that means they're going to go in the 16th verse. You understand? And it was very strategic. And then when you watch the rest of this video, like when you watch, when you go to the first, they go to the first verse and they say that uh, the beast in uh, Revelation 13, 1, 2, I guess 1, 2, and 3, they say that those different animals represent the attributes of uh, the Babylonians. That's a lion and the leopard. That's the Greeks and the bear. That's the Persian of meat. That was never taught back then. The, the, the leopard represents, represents the Greeks. The lion represents England, Great Britain. That, that's the symbol. The old flag of the United Kingdom was a lion. So they went off on that. So let's listen. All right, we're going right, to establish, establish our world, world dominance, dominance put, fear, put the fear of God on all nations all with these bombs into, what's the word, to um, subside the bombs. We're going to pass out these images, popularize this image. You understand? So they can know who gave us our grace the devil <laughs> and now these guys let me go let me come back i get a better picture right here bro. give me give me a second to show you that these guys are a bunch of hypocrites they'll tell people to keep the law but they just like the lord said keep um do as they say not as they do for they say and do not and to what's the word to um, subside, subside the bombs. We're gonna pass out these images. Pop. There you go. When he goes to the barber shop, he tells the barber to shave that. And mostly all of them got that. That's worldly right there. Them, them, you know, Rick Ross and other Jakes in the hip hop community, they'll grow beards now, but they'll shave this off. And that's going to get that's that's in violation of uh, of um, uh, Leviticus 19 and 27. Show you that they're a bunch of hypocrites. Popularize this image. You understand? So they can know who gave us our grace. The <laughs> devil. You understand? Jesus. You can't make this stuff. Jesus gave us authority to bomb y'all. What? <laughs> You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, very strategic. What did it say about that serpent? More subtle than any beast of the field. Crafty as hell. All right, go back to Revelation 13. Read verse 16. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Come on. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. One of the most controversial scriptures in the whole Bible now what makes it controversy is controversial to them because we here at GMS been saying for years since we got on YouTube before we got on YouTube the MOTB is a mark the uh, micro C hip so that's why he's saying this is the most controversial if we said if we went in line and said yes the, the the MOTB is sin in all of his forms and sleeping with white women or, or whatever Christianity, then it, he wouldn't he wouldn't have said that. But because we're saying that here in GMS, and we we the number one camp when it when it goes to Sakari and them Genesis, they teach that the MOTB is, uh, is a micro C hip. They don't put as many videos out as we do. We always put videos out on that subject. Why? Main reason why is because that's that's the next big major prophecy that's going to happen. Three major prophecies going to happen: the chipping, the destruction, the deliverance, and the kingdom, which is four four prophecies. So when they when um, they make the chip mandatory, everything's going to move quick. Then you know that we we're going to be out of here. 
You understand? He calls it all that he is the beast. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and blind, to receive a mark in their right hand and their forehead. So Christianity and some dumb black Hebrew Israelites in the spirit of Christianity has said that it is the micro micro trip, like the one you got in your debit card. Come on. Okay, so now let's listen again. They're going to eat their, trust me, all these guys that are teaching that, they're going to eat their words. They're going to eat, the, every last one of them, they're going to eat their words. Their mouths are going to be stopped. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and blind, to receive a mark in their right hand and their fo- forehead. So Christianity... And some dumb black Hebrew Israelites. Now, if you notice, they're not black Hebrew Israelites. They're, he, that term, B-H-I, is a governmental term. The feds, if you go to the book, um, uh, the, uh, the Project Megiddo, which you can get online. You can get, do, uh, what is it, PDF. You can get the whole book. And they mention, and this was, uh, 19, was it 1999? It was put out there. Before the year 2000, because the computer was supposed to crash in 2000, because the computer can't read past uh, 1999, and everything going to crash out. So they were say, putting, this, putting out there that uh, these different hate groups are going to attack people. And uh, then they mentioned uh, two major groups. Well, they mentioned the Christian Identity Movement, and then they mentioned the BHI. That's their term. That's a government term. Okay? Uh which we don't call ourselves that. But just recently, IUIC has been calling anybody that's not part of the IUIC a black. They're not black Hebrew Israelites. They're just Israelites. But you got them black Hebrew Israelites. He t- he talking about GMS, Sakari, Genesis, maybe Wi-Fi, AOC, Danya Allah, Priest Danya Allah, uh, uh, ISUPK. So we're black. So they're saying, no, we're Israelites. Those guys are black Israelites. So they separated themselves, them separated us from, from them, from these individuals right here. So they said, we're stupid, we're dumb, and we got a Christian, which not even all Christians. Well, Vocab is a, is a Christian. He's a, he's a, a, a Protestant, a Calvinist, he, which makes him a Christian. He doesn't teach that the market of the beast is the micro seed here. There's a lot of Christian organizations that don't, that don't teach it. In the spirit of Christianity <laughs> has said that it is the micro, micro trip, like the one you got in your debit card. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. No! That ain't it. All right, what's the mark? With, let's start with First Timothy chapter. Now, if these guys, they're scared to death of the blue letter. They're scared to death to go into certain words. If they simply went to the blue letter, which they despise the blue letter, why did they despise the blue letter? Because GMS you introduced the world. Myself, I introduced the world to the to the uh, the blue letter, because I was the one that showed uh, uh, the apostles. Oh, you got to check this page out. And at first, they wasn't using it, and they saw me using it. They said, oh, "We got to start using this blue letter." Now, all these, let's go to the blue letter. Okay, let's hit the blue letter, and they'll tell you, "No, we didn't get that. We the spirit let me know. Yeah, the spirit." The spirit that got on me to make y'all get it. You're right. So if they were simply, if these, if these uh, numbskulls will simply go to the blue letter and look up the word for Mark and Revelation, they would, they would understand that it's a physical thing. Then, they, then you go to the root words. Chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The book of First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly mm-hmm. that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. This, these guys got to be the truth. Look at how that brother's reading. He sounds just like Alexander Scorby. Giving heed to seducing spirits mm. and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. Right, Christian. So what we're teaching about the MOTB being a micro C hip microchip is a doctrine of devils. So guess what they're calling us? They're calling us a bunch of devils. We're teaching the devil doctrine. 
And then Yahweh Shai said that in, in Matthew chapter 10, and not too many words, I'm not going to go to it. Somebody could put it in the chat that um, that if they call me the devil, you think they're not going to devil too? So, so guess what? We're in good company, man. C keep calling me the devil. And then this is what Apostle Gabal always brings out. Okay, we're uh, an hour in, damn near, not one precept. Not one precept. Yes, sir, this demon, oh my goodness, laugh out loud. Shalom, most high in Christ bless. M-H-N-C-B, most high Christ bless. Shalom, captain. Uh, you know, music, fire. And then mostly, mostly women. Christianity, Catholicism, Go ahead. speaking lies and hypocrisy, Watch this. having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And this is going back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. When you keep reading 10, 11, and 12, it talk about the strong delusion to where people can't receive the truth. That's because their conscience is seared with a hot iron. What the heck? What happens when you leave a hot iron, when you sear your shirt with a hot iron. These are mark. And these are permanent mark. You understand? So, so now they added a new scripture to it, because I guess there's window shoppers out there murmuring, well, maybe Green GMS might be right. I don't know, man. I had a dream about that. Uh, so now he now they got another scripture, first <laughs> first Timothy 4 and 1. So I guess he's saying that seal with a hot iron is actually the mark, the mark of the beast. Oh, damn mark that is left comes from the doctrine of devils which what do you think is the doctrine of the damn devil sin <laughs> you and what do christianity teach basically do as thou wilt the same thing the satanic bible teach you can do what you want to do in the name of white jesus all right a reverse three this like so we're he's uh, calling us christians we come in the spirit of christianity so secretly we're, we're we got pictures of caesar boger in our house in our wallets i got a picture of caesar boger in our, my wallet and like behind closed doors i'm taking the picture out and kissing it a little confirmation to it read verse three forbidding to marry that's the catholic priesthood go ahead and commanding to abstain from meat that's lint right that was made up by the catholic church read which god have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth so now go to job chapter 10 verse 14 just in case we slow it's, it's made very plain here what the hell is this mark john excuse me job chapter 10 verse 14 come on first of all they said the the mark is sin they said the mark is sin what? If I sin, if I what? If I sin, if I sin, sin, that means according to them, if I receive the mark, it's the transgression of the law. Go ahead. Then thou markest me. Then thou what? Markest me. Then thou markest me. Come on. And thou will not. I thought the I thought the mark was sin. You got to sin first, and then you get the mark. So then, what is the mark? With me from mine iniquity. You see that? So what is the mark? Sin. Plain and simple. Now notice that this is where people get retarded. Will it say in their right hand, in their forehead? So that means it got to be a surgical chip. Really, nigga? Now go to Revelation. Revelation 17. In verse. Now look, don't let nobody put no damn chip. And by the way, the word mark in um, the book of Job 10 and 14, it means uh, I'm watching you now. I believe, I believe the word is Shema. I'm not going to go to it. Matter of fact, I will go to it. Let me go to it. Job 10 and 14. Hey, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is getting ready to bring judgment on uh, the IUIC. Because they're leading the people astray.
If I sin, then thou market me, and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. So let's look up some words here. The word is Shema. It means to watch. Wa, uh, wa Shamar Thawaya. Shema. Watch. If you commit a sin, the most high, he's going to look at you, he's going to mark you for that. In the Greek, the word is uh, scope, scopeo, to scope you out, to observe, to give heed, change, keep guard, watch. So now let's come on back. Keep in your damn head, in your hand, man. <laughs> that ain't what it's talking about. Yeah. Revelation 17, verse 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 4. Uh -huh. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. The woman color. is talking about Babylon the Great, America. All this stuff go together. Go ahead. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Read. Having a golden cup in her hand. So she got a golden cup in her hand. Hand. Message. Come on. <laughs> Full of abominations and filthiness of a fornication. What is abominations and filthiness of fornication? Sin. Read. And upon so that's in the hand. Go ahead. And upon her forehead. And upon her forehead. Read. Was a name written. Mystery. Babylon the Great. The. It has nothing to do with the mark. Reve uh, Revelation uh, 17 and 4 has nothing to do with uh, Revelation 13 and 16. Those are two different things. Two different thoughts. Mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Which is what? Oh, they also say, when you watch the whole video from the beginning, they say that the beast that came up in Revelation 13, 1, 2, 1, 2, and 3, <clears throat> the deadly wound was, was healed. It's talking about America. Half right. It's talking about NATO. The beast com is comprised of NATO, EU, which includes the U.S. and Canada. That's why all those NATO and EU nations, they're going to they're gonna push that chip. But then they're going to push it. And they work with China. They work with China. China, that's the model. They're going to they're gonna use the Chinese leadership government to push that mark first. And then it's going to go throughout the whole world, in my estimation. But the, the orders is coming out of uh, London. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this here. Bear me for a minute. see here what is project agora
Okay. Project Agora is a public-private partnership that aims to improve the corresponding banking model and making cross-border payments more efficient and secure. And ultimately, it's going to go into the chip. Let me go over here. The project aims, or Agora means marketplace, by the way. Look the word up. It's in the scriptures, Acts 17. You're going to see the word uh, a marketplace, which Greek word is Agora. Because the chip you're going to buy and sell. See, hospitals are, when you go to the hospital, you're buying, you're, you're, you're buying into the hospital. You need money to buy whether it be through the government's going to pay for it, but there's a payment. The reason why hospitals are able to stay, you know, um, not go bankrupt is because we need hospitals and the government. If you don't got the money to pay for it, the government pays for it. The project aims to test the desirability, feasibility, and viability of a multi-currency unified ledge ultimately all these ba they call it baskets of, a basket of currencies and they're going to make a like a international dollar let's say ledger for wholesale cross-border payments buy and sell based on the vision laid out in chapter three of the 2023 bis which stands for bank of international settlements uh annual economic report which Bank of International Settlements and seven central banks to, to explore asset tokenization through Project Agora. That's showing you that the whole world's going to receive that chip. Ultimately, everything's going to be digital, but then everything is going to go from your smartphone to your micro C hip. Look, you can take a, a credit card, a debit card, and you can put it as an app in your phone. And uh, instead of taking out a credit card to swipe or, you know, wave, whatever they call it, a uh, cashless, uh, touchless payment, or whatever they call it, you can use your phone now. You can put, bring your phone out, police stop you. You can bring, bring out your smartphone and show them your license on the phone. Your license your registration, your insurance is all on your, your smartphone. So ultimately, all that information will be put in a chip and put into your right hand or your forehead. Hey, if you notice, uh, Trump, I believe that was 2017, if not 2016, I believe before he got pre president. I'm not going to look it up. But he said he was dead set against blockchain and and uh, cryptocurrency and all that. And now when he ran, he said, I'm with it now. Well, what changed his mind? Because they gave him a script. They said, okay, we're going to let you be president, but you got to push, you got to be with it. He's just a puppet. He's controlled opposition. Okay. Uh, Project Agora is structured as a public, private, uh, but uh, together seven central banks, Bank of France, Bank of Japan, Bank of Korea, Bank of Mexico, Swiss National Bank, that's Europe, Bank of England, that's Europe, and the Federal Reserve Bank of what? Of New York. Because there's going to be an international dollar based upon uh, uh, digital, digital money. Okay, what is the Bank of International Settlements? blockchain project agora agora mean in the marketplace what do you do in the marketplace you have trials you have debates and you have the marketplace where you can buy and sell project agora launched by the bis bank of international settlements in may of 2024 so we're talking uh damn, six months ago, uh, focuses on exploring how 
tokenization, the process the process of turning traditional financial assets, which includes money, into digital tokens. Digital that can be traded on a blockchain. That's why that's why uh Trump all of a sudden he's with it because he was told to get with it behind the scenes. Look, you're gonna we're gonna let you be president again, but you're gonna have to push this blockchain. Oh, what, what, whatever, whatever you tell me to do can improve the speed, transparency, and security of international payments. So if I have a company and I want to buy something from China, and I use digital payments, there's a record on it, so they can, so they can say, uh, uh, we never got the money. No, everything is digital. Everything is digital. Uh, which, okay, it says here, okay, which blockchain will be used for CB, CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies? Ethereum, which is a, a digital currency, in particular is the most product, production-ready blockchain chain to support CBDCs, Central Bank Digital Currencies requirements in terms of scalability and privacy systems tr system trust a blockchain based cbdc central bank digital currency enables central banks to control the and can central banks to control the currency digital currency while protecting the privacy and independence of the central bank digital cur currencies use use to the end users so if you get up three in the morning and you want to go to the store you got the munchies 12 at night to a midnight snack you want to go to uh some supermarket that's open 24 hours a day and you buy a couple of things that's all that's all on they got they know where you went <laughs> they know they know exact oh he's at this store he left his house at x x amount of time he went to the store he came back If you're doing drugs, you can't do drugs no more because because that's illicit illicit drugs. So what is the drug dealers going to do? You know what, what what's going to happen with the black market? What are you going to have a barter system? They said who owns the black the Bank of International Settlements? Let's see, let's find out. Established in 1930. Wow, the the bank the bank of international settlements is owned by 63 central banks representing countries from around the world that together account for about 95 percent of of the world gdp which is the gross domestic uh, product that's 95 percent of the gross domestic product that means they own everything so the few banks that are not a part of it the five percent, they can just push them out. We don't, we don't recognize y'all. See, in order for you to live, eat, buy things, pay rent, get a car, do this stuff, you're gonna have to have that chip. So that's when we're gonna have to trust in the Most High. Isaiah sixty-five and twelve, I believe, is a twelve verse. You should be saying, wow. And these guys don't understand the mechanics. Is this him? They don't understand the mechanics of how this whole thing is going to come to come to pass. They just, he, all he's doing is, is, um, is, um, what's the word? Mocking or, uh, regurgitating what he learned, you know? They don't know what's going on. Now, Bishop Nate might know what's going on because maybe he made a deal. We can't prove that. Because he did say a couple of years, a few years ago, he said they might put a chip in there. So that means you believe it?
mm-hmm. and you agree with it. Like people reach out their right hand and make an agreement or a covenant. You understand? You agree with it. You believe it, you agree with it. All right? That's what it's talking about. So let's get some examples. And this is why they should wonder. The IUIC should wonder, why Why is it not, why, why you know, GMS members are not coming even members that fall off from GMS or leave GMS or get kicked out of GMS, they ain't coming to the IUIC because they would say, okay, we got five GMS members, former GMS members that woke up to the madness of GMS and now they're with us. Sakari, no, none, of, none of these Sakari guys are, are flocking to uh, IUIC. None of these ISUP, uh, ISUP K, K guys are flocking to uh, uh, the IUIC. They should wonder about that. If these guys really have that truth, there should be guys of other Israelite camps that are flocking to their camp. Now, remember we read earlier in Revelation, right? It said... So this guy got the mark of the beast because that's a sin right there. That right there is a sin. Now, if they tell me there's no way you can do that in the scriptures, okay, well, if you can do, if you can put a razor to your head right about here, you can go, when, when does it stop? Where does the scripture say, well, it stops right here? He can actually go deeper and create a mohawk. And like coming back over here, coming back over to these zombies over here, there's not, as Apostle Gabar says, there's not one scripture, not one precept, not one precept. Go to any of our pages, you see nothing but precepts in the chat. That this beast had the feet of a, what, but the leopard, the bear, then it said the mouth of a lion. The lion is Babylon, right? Right. That was never taught that way. The mouth represents England. So, what did Babylon do? The mouth of a lion. Daniel 3, verse Daniel 4. 3, verse 4. The book of Daniel, book of Daniel. Chapter, three, chapter 3, verse 4. Come on. Then, then in Herod cried aloud, to you to it you is commanded, O people, people, nations, nations and, languages. and languages. Right, so this was under the jurisdiction of Nebuchadnezzar, all right, of Babylon. Read. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, have set up. You gotta worship that golden image. Read. And whoso falleth not down and worship, and if you don't worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Y'all see that? You gotta be put to death. America gonna do the same thing. Let's go to the white man. First Maccabees 1. First Maccabees 141. Amalek. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Go ahead. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. That what? All should be one people. Right. This is what the white man today calls the New World Order. Ain't that on the back of your dollar? That's the E Pluribus Unum, right? Or is it the other giant? Yeah, I think that's the E Pluribus Unum. The New World Order. No, Nuvo. Yeah, that's right. Say it on the mic. Nuvos Ordo Seclorum. Yeah, that's New World Order right there. You understand? Same agenda. Did he like his judgment and tutoring. Same spirits come back. Same stuff. Read. Read. Verse 42. Verse 42. And, everyone and everyone should leave his laws. His and, law. and there you go. There you go. In order to order be, be, be down, be down. <laughs> you understand? Like we read in Daniel chapter 3, you had to leave your laws. That's law number one for the Israelites. Have no other gods before me. Number two, don't bow down to them. You, un- you understand? But that was the law that Babylon had set up. Guess what? Look at what the law that the Greeks established. That you had to leave your laws. Go ahead. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Come on. Yay. Many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. To his what? His religion. That's what that it go back to first Timothy chapter four. Doctrines of devils. 
doctrines. doctrines. You understand? understand. That Mark, Mark is dealing is with idolatry. The religion of Satan. Go ahead. And, and sacrifice unto idols, idols and profane the Sabbath. Jump down of, I'm trying to get the part. I don't know if I passed it <clears throat> where he says don't take the chip. He, he says don't take the chip. But that has nothing to do with Revelation 13 and 16, but don't take the chip. So they do know that that they, that that there will be a, the world will be introduced to to the chip, the microchip technology. Forty nine, verse forty nine. Uh -huh. To the end, they might forget the law. So we can forget the law, and the mark would be on our foreheads, meaning sin, instead of God's laws. Because remember, He said He gonna seal the servants of God in their forehead. You understand? Satan trying to put that mark on your forehead, meaning what? You forget the law and consent unto his religion. Read. And change all the ordinances. Jump down to 56. Verse 56. Come on. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, they burnt them with fire. So if they found you with the Holy Bible, they burnt, they took your Bible and burnt it with fire. You know, they're they working on that. They finna ban these Bibles. Because we, we got this Bible, and we just constantly prophesying their destruction. Constantly revealing the wicked. That's right. undoing the mark. That's upon many of the, the foreheads of our people. Getting our people to repent. You understand? I'm telling you, this thing going to come into effect. Read. And wheresoever was found with any the book of the testament. And if you was found with the Bible, read. Or if any consented to the law. You was a commandment keeper. The king's commandment was that they should put him to death. So that happened in Babylon. That happened in Greece. That also happened during the Spanish Inquisition. You understand? When they was rebuilding the desolate places, establishing the Renaissance era. Same thing. So, give me some images real quick. Is that going to happen today? Yes. It's in the works. All right. Put that on the screen. Trying to get the part where he said they will. They said don't take the chip anyway. So, they, be, they be, do believe that the... That the world is going to be, and everybody's going to be introduced to a microchip, but but it has nothing. Like I said, I'm saying it for the second time. So now, mind you, right? And we done went over this before plenty of times. Judaism, Judaism is supposed to be like an anti-Christ religion. They don't believe in Jesus. They they books say the Talmud say all type of foul stuff about. Jesus. They got all type of wicked, filthy folklore about Jesus Christ. What? They say that he's a spawn of Satan. But you got the Catholic Pope, the face of Christianity, literally in the face, kissing the face, licking whatever, intimate in the face of what's supposed to be the anti-Christ religion. What the hell? Because they, they, I'm telling you, they're joining together. All right? Uh, Novio, Seclor, whatever they are. All right, give me the next. <laughs> it's Auto Novio Seclorum. New World Order. <laughs> you understand? Not only the, not only Amalek, the fake Jews and the Christians, but Muslims as well. They all going to come together under one banner. All right, for the New World Order. All right, was that it? Was it another one? Yeah, look at that. You understand? So, yeah. Go, go back to Revelation 13. It's going down, brothers and sisters. It's going down. Revelation 13, 17. Revelation 13, verse 17. Come on. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark mm -hmm. or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. So, again, microchip, you understand people taking this and all type of crazy beliefs and doctrines. So, so just now, let me now, let me just say this, right? Say this, right? America, America has already flexed, already flexed this, power, this power, but it hasn't, it hasn't gone, gone to the ex extent, extent 
of this verse being 100% fulfilled. What I mean by that is, it's going to extend to all of, like it's in verse 16, calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. You understand? But they've already flexed this power on a global scale. All right, give me that real quick, the Wikipedia. It said that no man might buy or sell, save he that have had them, save he that has the mark. Give me that Wikipedia real quick. Did I post it? I give me a second. The bishop with the law said, What do you what the ET? What the hell are you doing? The hell is this? Well you got that from your shire. Alright, I just said it. So it's saying that no man might be not excuse me, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. Put that on the screen real quick. United States United sanctions. States sanctions. Mm -hmm. What's that? United States United sanctions States are financial and trade restrictions trade imposed against individuals, entities, and jurisdictions whose actions contradict U.S. foreign policy. U.S. foreign what? Foreign policy. Foreign. This has nothing to do with the chip. Okay. What? Policy. Hmm. This is a lot. This is word salad. This is a lot of salad that they get. A lot of oh, look how many scriptures and documentations he brought out, and that's what get. Like I said, the reason why I call the IUIC, the members of the IUIC, zombies, because that's exactly what they are. They don't study. They don't doubt. They they don't fact check like the Church of Berea. They don't fact check what these guys are saying. They whatever whatever he said, I don't know what he said, but he sure preached good. Or national security goals. Now remember that word policy. All right, give me that in Daniel chapter eight. Daniel chapter. Daniel chapter. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me bring that back. Are we familiar with uh, BIS? Huh? I spoke about it. BIS, Bank of International Sell Sell Settlements. See, U.S., China, and so forth. They buy and sell on an international scale. All right. Give me that in Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. So it said, against individuals, entities, and jurisdictions. All right? Basically, countries. Read that. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Go ahead. And through his policy. Through his what? His policy. Come on. Also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Mm. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Uh -huh. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. He's going to get so magnified in his heart that he's going to stand up against Christ. Read. But he shall be broken without hand. The Lord going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. All this stuff go together. Daniel 8, Daniel 8 has nothing to do with the uh, prophecies that are going to happen now. This is taught... Daniel chapter 8 is exclusively talking about Antiochus' epiphanies. The 25th verse on down, he will be destroyed without hands. That's when Antiochus had that sickness in his stomach. It was really uh, bac bacteria overgrowth, uh, candida overgrowth that, mag that magnified. If you don't check it, you're going to die. It's going to take over your whole body. But the Most High, that's what the, that's what he died of, because it came from the gut. His his microbiome was was way the hell off. His microbiome, his flora, flora, flora. Look up microbiome and look up flora. That flora and that microbiome have to be balanced. So it was imbalanced. So the Most High did it. He struck him in the in the um the gut area. 
has not Daniel 8 has nothing to do you can't say well in Daniel 8 is this is what's gonna no as a matter of fact if you go back mm, if you go back I don't know maybe even not even a year there was one brother in the IUIC that said it was talking about Antilles Epiphanies and they recently changed it maybe six months ago this uh, Daniel chapter 8 is referring to Antiochus Epiph Epiphanies N not, it's not talking about now so they went off on that and then the thing about these guys is they'll change they'll change a, um, a breakdown but they won't take they refuse they don't take the old videos down come on man that's confusion most is not the author of confusion all right now nah. <laughs> give me first mega beat chapter eight so this is an example of sanctions in the bible this was the roman republic all right not the roman empire with the 12 caesars but their predecessor the roman republic first maccabees eight verse four the book of first maccabees chapter eight verse four which these were the sons of japheth yeah. And that by their policy and patience. By their what? Policy and patience. By their policy and patience. Come on. They had conquered all the place, mm. though it were very far from them. And the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth, till so they had discomfited them and given them a great overthrow, so that the rest did give them tribute every year. Jump down to verse. This has nothing to do with the MOTB. First Maccabees 8 and 4 has absolutely nothing to do with Revelation 13 and 16. But people feel that, you know, this is called empty calories. They're giving you food that's not nourishing. But no, we, they fed us good. You know, they, gave, they gave you empty calories, spiritually empty calories calories 26 watch this verse 26 come on neither shall they give anything unto them that make war upon them so if you are up to, to the romans you understand you, you they cannot there's sanctions right there they cannot receive anything watch this or aid them with fiddles with, with goods weapons weapons money money or ships uh -huh. as it have seen good unto the romans if they decide you can't get that you ain't gonna get it if you don't agree with their policy you understand that you violate it's all with go ahead but they shall keep their covenants without taking anything, therefore. So like I said, America did not already done that on that scale as far as sanctions, embargoes, stuff like that. But when we read in Revelation 13, it's going to go to a much broader extent, right? Meaning to us. You understand? You ain't going to be able to buy or sell just like we read about in Babylon. If you didn't bow down and worship that beast or that image, thrown in a fire. First Maccabees one. If you didn't part, to, if you didn't consent unto his religion, put to death. You understand? It's it's gonna get there. And how are they going to uh, force people to submit to consent unto their religion? Watch this. Give me that next clip. This is how economics play a part in the um, um the religion, religion of the beast play that and this is from bishop nate daniel class double honors to the mighty bishop nate daniel this this one of the coldest classes ever all right this was recent too all right idolatry america's last sin you understand where he went and he brought it out. What we going over right now. As you saw, that which have been done is that which shall be. I right? they're going to force people to be subject unto this one world religion. And economics is going to be a tool of establishing that that power, that submission. Play that clip. The scariest thing in the world for me is the central bank digital currency. When there's a central bank digital currency, the government can literally, because it's all digital, they can control where you spend and what you spend, and they can cut you off at one point if they own the central hub of the ledger. If it's on one ledger. If it's That's on one ledger. one ledger. And that is what they're gearing up for. They're gearing up for central bank digital currency. Now, just, I mean, let's just quickly... Con 
you. And ultimately, what are they going to do? They're going to put a chip in you. So this, he's telling you what it is. C, the CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Ultimately, it's going to go in the form of a chip. Pair central bank digital currency with what happened with COVID. During COVID, we had to stay at home, and there were curfews, and you had to be at home past a certain time. The C ragamuffin was a test run. The pharmaceutical uh, people made a lot of money. Hospitals made a lot of money. Everybody got rich, and uh, it destroyed. It also destroyed the uh, the big box stores. Got richer. The richer be- the the rich became even richer, and the poor became poorer, and it and it destroyed damn near. I, don't, I can't give you a percentage, but it, it, during that time period of C. Ragamuffin, remember everything was closed. The only thing was was there was a few places that was closed, a limited hours, but the the box stores like the the, the Staples, the the BJ's, uh, the Costco's, the Amazons, the, the the people in the warehouse working in Amazon driving the truck, they were all around each other. Some of them got sick, but they said no, you still got to come into work. But if you was in a small mom and pop, uh, you know, set, a setting, they, you know, we had to close you down. You, the gym, all the gyms were closed down. So a lot of these gyms went out of business. Except for the major ones that, that you know, they can sit there for two years. And, oh, oh, you didn't have to pay rent. The rent moratorium, remember that? So this is a dry run. And, pe- and so now people are waking up to the fact that they had relatives that took it, and they decided not to took it, and they wound up getting sick and dropping dead. So that so that was a, a test run. I mean, you couldn't go in the morning. Now, one way to enforce that is to just say, hey, guys, you can't leave, and if you do leave, you better be part of the essential, the, worker. essential workers. Another way to do it is to just cut off your spending and basically say to you, listen, you cannot spend money between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Cannot spend money. Wherever you go, you will not be able to touch money out of your bank account. Once people get used to using the central bank digital currency, you've given the government the ultimate power. Damn! Well, all righty. Well, all righty. Well, and then eventually they're going to put, if you guys can't see it, you guys are a bunch of retards. Ultimately, they're going to take, that's either going to be putting a credit card, a, um, a, a CBDC credit card, or you can put it in your smartphone. But ultimately, because you can lose your smartphone, you can lose your credit card. Ultimately, they're going to put it in your right hand or on your forehead, on your, if you're, on your left hand if you're of the East, uh, 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 in Europe. So they, they they see it. Ultimately, they're gonna put everything in your microchip. But he's talking about his sin. Hey man. Hey man. So, so once they put that they thing put in the play, I'm telling you, you, when when they, when shut, they shut, off off shut off all your monies, and you tell me somebody, I oh, keep the commandment. That's gonna a lot of people gonna be tried in that day. All right. All right. How you think? Why you, you think, think it said many of the Israelites also Israelite Israelite consented Israelite unto their religion? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, you know, hey, go back to Revelation 13, read 17 and 18. Revelation chapter 13. I gave him a bunch of word salad and a bunch of videos. And this, oh, my dog, this is deep. Yo, this is deep, yo. Oh, shit. This is, see, GMS, man. Them guys are a bunch of devils. This is, yo, yo, ah, this is deep. Yo, these brothers are going in. Yeah, they're going in into the f- confusion. Complete confusion. Verse 17. Come on. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. So we went over how the U.S. has had the power for years, right, to establish sanction it, sanctions and embargoes, but it's going deeper. It's going into, like, what they brought out with the central uh, central banking digital currency or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's going to be a long CBDC on those lines to affect everyone. Go ahead. Or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. And this is where a lot of people get retarded too. Watch this verse 18. Here is wisdom. Here go wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. Now, I got a personal belief about this right here. Right? Who on earth brought the understanding out about the number of the beast? 
The general. Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop Nathaniel. Read it again. Read it again. Here is wisdom. Here is wisdom. Let, Let him, him that hath understanding. Hang on, say that. Go ahead. Count the <laughs> number <laughs> of the beast. Come on. For it is the <laughs> number <laughs> of <laughs> a man. Of a what? A man. They go back to the <laughs> second Thessalonians <laughs> 2. The man of <laughs> sin. <laughs> that <laughs> wicked. Eat him. Eat him. If this ain't word salad, I don't know what word salad is. Let's look up word salad. Word salad, meaning. Here's the definition of salad. A cold dish of various mixtures of raw or cooked vegetables, usually seasoned with oil, vinegar, or other dressing and sometimes accompanied by meat, fish, or other ingredients. A word, a word salad is a confused or unintelligible mixture of seemingly random words and phrases. He jumping around the precept. Oh, that's deep. Oh, he went in the mouth. Oh, that's deep. Oh, he, he, he went to Daniel chapter 8. He jumped over here. He came back to Revelation. That's deep. No, that's word salad or scripture salad. They got a new word, y'all. That's scripture salad. Scripture salad. Most often used to describe a... A symptom of a neurological or mental disorder. Yeah, you, you saying all this crazy shit, you coming off like you crazy. Uh, what is this? The name uh, schizophrenia is used in uh, particular to describe the confused language that may be evident in schizophrenia. Okay, so now I'm going to come back over here. Esau, Esau. and his number, and his is, number 600, is 600, three score, three score and six. six. So six. That first came about with the uh, un, uh, uni, uh, UPC, Universal Product Code, that set of numbers when they when you scan, when they scan now, that set of numbers. That's the, that the, the the first two lines, elongated lines, the end long two elongated lines, and the middle two elongated lines. Or 666. So they got the machine set up where you're going to take your microchip and you just scan it. And you can do that now. You can do it at Whole Foods as a palm scanner. But they, they're going to replace that with a chip. 100, three scores. Score is 20. So three score is 60. So 660 and 6. 6, 6, 6. Now, like I said. Ooh, that's deep. Ooh, that that brother went in. Yeah. Yeah. Him that have Him understanding, that have I understand. bishop, bishop. They made it plain. Made it plain. You, understand? you understand? They didn't make you didn't make it plain. None of y'all made it plain. You gave me a lot of word salad. No, nothing plain. But we gonna help y'all out because I know you know. Y'all just Jay Z, Beyonce, Beyonce. And, you know how that weird. Shut stuff. your black lips. Your black lips. But uh, go to go to the second edge week. So this is what it's going into. The book of Second Esdras, Second Esdras. Chapter, six, chapter 6, verse 9. Right For Esau For is Esau the end of the world. So the Bible says Esau is the end of the world. What does it have to do with the chip? Uh, Revelation 13 and 16. Go ahead. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Now we dealing with the book of Revelation, which is all about the world ending. You understand? And Ezra said Esau is the end of the world. Now, what the hell they got to do with six, six, six? Let's see. Revelation 6 and 12. Read that. And any of you guys in GMS, you sisters, you men that doubt what we are teaching, if you're thinking, I don't know, man, IUIC might be correct. I want you to no longer... <clears throat> be a part of the GMS. I want you to get with the IUIC and tell them that you GMS, that uh, they, uh, they, ain't say, they ain't giving me what I want. Tell them, they'll accept, they'll accept you. Bishop, you know, they'll have a council and you tell them you GMS, you, you, you don't like the leadership of GMS no more. You, you had humbly asked to get with them. Don't, don't play, don't, don't play games. Okay? If you're with this, if you're with this, this, the, the men, the true men of the Lord, you stay with the true men. If not, you go with them. If you think they're the true men of the Lord, please, 
<clears throat> go. We're not going to talk bad about you. We'll laugh at you, but we're not going to talk bad at you about you. I don't think. The book of Revelation, <clears throat> chapter, six, chapter six, verse twelve. Come on. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. The what? The, the sixth seal. The sixth seal. Come on. And lo, there was a great earthquake. That great earthquake is talking about World War Three. You understand? In which the white man is going to be the, the main character. What does this have to do with this? This guy going in a different direction, man. What, what does this have to do with Revelation 13 and 16? Now, go to Revelation 9 and 13. So we dealt with what? The sixth seal. Revelation 9. Ah, okay, the double meaning. The 666 and Revelation 3, 13 and 18 and the, and the, and the six uh, and the six. The sixth seal. This is nothing but word salad. 13. Revelation chapter 9, verse 13. Come on. And the sixth angel uh -huh. sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Come on. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet. Had the what? The trumpet. Come on. Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So now you're reading about the sixth trumpet. Now, go to Revelation 16 and 12. So there's two sixes. Revelation chapter. This is, are y'all are watching this, man? He went to Revelation 13 and 18, and now he's going to other scriptures, which he just looked up word six. Let's pull out, pull out scriptures with six in it. And the general broke it down. Matter of fact, let me come back over here. Because, let me see. Let me see. Uh, let me come back over here. So I'm at the 50 minute mark. I wanted to get the mark with it. I believe he says it right around here. I think I missed it. He said they all. He said, um, but don't take the chip if they give it to you. Let's see if I can Kennedy, catch it. Yeah. Right, the, right, the crosses and all of that, the white Jesus, all type of countries and governments, small and great, has ascribed the name of Jesus to that face and that cross. Come on now, dog. That that's that was to deceive the world. So guess what? The world is deceived. That's why the wicked gotta be what revealed. That's what's happening right now. Now remember, it said in Revelation 13. Uh, that the, uh, image, the should image should both should speak. speak. It says speak, speak right? Speak, right? So also, so also this one of them powers, signs, lion wonders, wonders, they technology, wonders, their technology, media. Their media. You, understand? you understand? This the, their media, media capability, capability was, was never before, never before seen. seen. You, understand? you understand? Watch this. Give me that real Give quick. A clip. A movie clip about the image speaking. I just want them like eight seconds. Yeah, so the image is picture of Cesar Bogier. And uh the image speaking is uh those movies that you watch on Cesar Bogier. These this is this is madness, man. Uh, let me let me kind of try to go past that. Let me uh, wait a minute, let me go over here. I'm Come sorry. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> Eve the world, the brothers world, and sisters. Brothers and sisters. You understand, and it was very strategic. All right, we're going to establish our world dominance, put, put the fear of God on all nations with these bombs, and to, what's the word, to um, subside, subside the bombs, we're going to pass out these images, popularize this image. You understand, so they can know who gave us our Grace. The devil. <laughs> you understand? Jesus. You can't make this stuff. Jesus gave us authority to bomb y'all. <laughs> what? <laughs> you understand? I'm telling you, very strategic. What did it say about that serpent? More subtle than any beast of the field. Crafty as hell. All right, go back to Revelation 13. Read verse 16. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Come on. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. One of the most controversial scriptures in the whole Bible. You understand? He calls it all that he is the beast. 
both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and their forehead. So Christianity and some dumb black Hebrew Israelites in the spirit of Christianity <laughs> has said that it is the micro micro trip, like the one you got in your debit card. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. No! No! That ain't it. That ain't it. Yeah, All right, no. what's the mark? What's the with, mark? Let's start with First Timothy chapter four. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. The book of. He says it somewhere. Yeah, I'm not gonna go jump around, but he says it somewhere that. Uh, but when they give you the chip, don't take it. He says it somewhere in this video. Uh, but anyway, um, like I said, any of you guys, don't you know, grow a backbone. You guys in GMS that really don't believe you you know the magic ain't there no more with gms you can leave you can leave us and get with them maybe they got the true knowledge maybe this is what you're looking for i'm just throwing it out there y'all anyway with that i'm gonna say uh shalom on to the next shalom